Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about the Galileo probe that they allowed to drop into the atmosphere of Jupiter and eventually go into the planet to the point where the, the probe could no longer survive. It was protected by a heat shield. It was simply dropped from the uh, Galileo spacecraft. It entered into the atmosphere. It went through the atmosphere past the point where the atmospheric pressures one atmosphere just continued to go down and eventually well it was crushed when it reached a total pressure of 22.7 atmospheres and the temperature it measured at the end was 425 Kelvin that's about 150 degrees Celsius so it was plunging through this very thick atmosphere became very hot the pressure was enormous at 22.7 atmospheres and then when it's finally well it died it no longer functioned and no longer any signals were sent to the orbiting spacecraft which would then relay back to earth in some way it was an absolute success this was the first time that was ever done they wanted to go ahead and see what the consistency was of the atmosphere they wanted to go to the cloud layers and and measure what was there the content and try to compare it to what was observed from space and of course if something could go wrong something will go wrong and something did go wrong it turned out that by accident the, the probe plunged right through a region of the atmosphere where there were virtually no cloud covers at all. It was basically a wide open space, no cloud cover. It plunged right in there and it bypassed all these various layers, directly went into the gaseous uh, region of the atmosphere and the gaseous region of the planet. So that was kind of a disappointment. I remember hearing about that and go, oh, how could that have happened? Because it is very difficult to miss. I mean, there's only very small regions on the planet where you could actually go through the atmosphere and not go through any of these cloud layers. So that was disappointing because we didn't get all the measurements we wanted. But other than that, we did get temperature. We did measure the consistency of the different gases that were there. We measured pressure. There were lots of good data that came back. And by the time the probe went down to about 100 kilometers below what we would call the surface of the planet where the atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere. So it went quite deep into the planet and notice that the temperature measure was a little bit higher, 425 Kelvin, than we would have expected it to be. We expected it to be about 400 Kelvin. And the reason actually why the temperature measure was a little bit higher was actually consistent with the concept that if you bypass these layers, that would be a region where you have more of an upwelling of the atmosphere from the lower, from the inside region of the planet up into the atmosphere. Kind of like the updraft that you'd see in the, on the Earth's desert. When it gets really warm, you have this updraft and so warmer temperatures go high up into the atmosphere. And that's what we suppose happened here as well, that these layers of uh, gaseous layers of, of warm air, of warm atmosphere, I shouldn't call air, but warm atmosphere, were welling up in the regions where there weren't any cloud covers to stop it. And so we then figured that the temperature would then have to be higher at that depth. And indeed, it was about 25 degrees higher than we would have expected it to be if it had plunged right through the cloud layer. So in that respect, it was kind of interesting. Uh, but I'm sure that the scientists were very disappointed. Uh, they didn't let off they said a hey, huge success of course and it was from a technical perspective to be able to fly a spacecraft to jupiter and launch this probe and plunge it into uh, the atmosphere and of course having the aerodynamics so that the heat shield would kind of like always keep pointing downward and it plunged through an enormous hundreds and hundreds of kilometers of atmosphere and into the planet and all successfully was able to then relay back all the information that it gathered it lasted almost an hour. So the question was how long would it last and I remember thinking that their goal was it should last at least an hour and it almost did. So they were hoping that it would go just a little bit further down to continue taking readings but at the time that the temperatures reached 150 degrees Celsius and pressures were over 20 atmospheres it no longer could withstand those harsh environments. And so where's the probe now? It's somewhere inside Jupiter. Who knows how far down it's made out of metal and components that are heavier than, of course, the gases that the planet is made out of. So we can probably imagine that it just continues to sink and continues to get hotter. And as it got hotter, then some of the components will begin to melt. And who knows? I don't know if there's any structural remains left of that probe. Uh, but that was um, quite amazing that they did that. Interesting. A uh, little bit disappointing that they didn't 
punched through the right party atmosphere. Uh, they did, of course, not, not have control over that uh, when they did, and, uh, but it was still, in all respect, still a good success.